Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep My name's Jason Newland Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes um, I think this is two days in a row Or, or I did the other day where I started the recording I went to cough so I kind of pressed um, pause while I did a little bit of a cough and I pressed the wrong button and it basically stopped the recording and I had to delete and start again and it's really weird because I've not done that I've probably only done it twice in the whole time that I've been making recordings so I've done it twice in a few days I don't understand it <sighs> so there's a couple of things <sighs> I can't be bothered to repeat what I was saying but a couple of things um, I've I applied to do a master's degree in uh, positive psychology which was going to start start January this January coming 2020 and student loan company agreed the loan to cover the costs of the course and um, but the today I got a, I got an email uh, decline in my application for that course so it's been probably six or seven weeks since I applied for it and now you know just over a month before it starts they've sort of said no which is you know, a little bit disappointing a little bit so that's that's kind of been today and then last night or it was early yesterday morning um, well basically here's a deal here's a situation with my podcast all my podcast episodes are hosted on Spreaker and I've had the space for 1,500 hours and I've been I've basically got to the end of the space you know I've used the space up the storage space but the next um, the next jump up or the next um, like to get unlimited storage is $100 a month no 100 Hundred and twenty dollars a month, which um, is a fair bit of money to be paying out. So I've kind of been putting it off for the last three months, four months, and I've been del deleting some of the older stuff from some of the podcasts. But I'm getting to the point where I can't do that anymore because I'm gonna. I don't want to lose the podcast. I don't, you know, I just, I need more space. So ultimately, I've just got too much stuff. So last night, part of the Black Friday thing, you know, discounts. I mean, this is an American thing, but England have taken it on. Probably the last 10 years or so, maybe less, taken on the Black Friday, which is like November... Fridays, a Friday in November, but we've seemed to be spreading out over like a week or something. And I've never got any money on Black Friday. I never have any money on bank holiday, you know, the, um, you know, was it bank holiday discounts uh, after Christmas? Boxing Day discounts. I never, I never have any money for those times. That's you can get some really good bargains. 
but anyway, part of this uh, Black Friday, as they call it, um, Spreaker, who, you know, they host my and store my podcast, they offered me a big discount if I took on the, the you know, the un- unlimited hosting, which is the next package up, which I need to do at some point. But they offered it to me instead of $120 a month. It would work out less if I paid it all in one go. If I paid for the year, it would be a lot a lot less. It would work out $100, $100 a month if I did it over the year. But it's $120 a month if I pay it monthly. I don't have $1,200 to pay out for for the um, the podcast, you know, all in one go. Wow, that's quite a lot of money every year, isn't it? Wow. Anyway, so but they offered me a discount, which was um, I need to double check it because I might have got it wrong. But I think it's seventy-seven dollars a month for the next year, and then it's going to go up to one hundred and twenty dollars a month, like next November two thousand twenty. So seventy-seven dollars a month. It's still still over a thousand dollars a year, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than. You know, it would have been. And so, yeah, I just, I did that last night. I just, I kind of, I'm not usually um, swayed by pressure selling. And they weren't pressure selling, but they were, it was a case of, you've only got till this time to, to take this offer. You know, if you don't take it now, then it won't be available tomorrow. Which was a little bit is that is pressure, isn't it? I think, and uh, so I thought, okay, I'll just I'll do it. So paying that amount out, luckily I didn't have to pay the full seventy-seven pound because I just paid the the normal twenty-nine pound or whatever it is I've been paying, or seventy-seven dollars twenty-nine. I don't know whatever, but. So I ended up paying about 40, 40 odd dollars, 44 dollars or something, based on how long I've already had it and yeah, whatever. So next month it'll be 77 dollars and every month until November next year and then it'll be 120 dollars a month. And it's left me really short. I don't mean I'm not like now five foot four. I'm still the same extremely tall five foot eight that I always was. But it's like, oh. It was like, ooh. <laughs> Where did all the money go out of my account? But I just kind of, I don't know. They might have. They might still offer that deal if I hadn't took it yesterday. They might have offered it next week. But I just, just and the podcast is so important to me. Um, and I've had, I've been, I've literally this week. A year ago is when I launched the Spreaker podcasts. And haven't deleted them or anything for a whole year. And got 564,000 uh, downloads over that time with the podcast. So I'm pleased with kind of how it's gone. And the I'm actually getting an increase recently in downloads and... But let me, this podcast, Let Me Bore You to Sleep, is, it just seems to get more and more positive feedback for some reason. I don't really 
understand it, but well, I appreciate it. And but as I, I think I said yesterday or the day before, I've now got three podcasts that are over a hundred thousand downloads. And so this should be the next one. I'm about 77,000 downloads of this podcast. Um, it would be a lot more if you include, because these, these episodes, these uh, sessions are also available on three other of my podcasts. And like the insomnia ones. So they also get, for every... Well, in some ways, I suppose, for every hundred downloads I get on this podcast, I probably get another, at least another 200 downloads elsewhere. So although this is 77,000, technically I've you know, probably got 120,000 or 140, I don't know. Wow, it's not bad, is it? So, I'm looking forward to... This is the one I want to reach 100,000 with. I suppose because this is the most personal one I do. And the de the relaxation for stress, anxiety, panic attacks is also like a really personal one too. And that's also growing. That's about 44,000 downloads, I think for that one and uh, I don't know I know I shouldn't well I used to say I shouldn't get stuck stuck on the old statistics but I like I like the stats I just it feels nice it feels nice to it's because it can't I can't rig it you know I can't I've got no control over over who listens and why they listen and anything like that it's you know I don't pay for I don't pay pay like a because you used to be able to pay bots these things called bots to that would like with YouTube on Facebook on MySpace uh, on various different podcasts, you could pay someone for 10,000 views on, on YouTube, for example, and you'd pay maybe $29, and they'd send, you know, your video would get viewed 10,000 times. Or the podcast would be listened to. Uh, so, you know, but I've you could still sometimes sell, you know, sort of promote it. I've I promoted it and paid for promotion with Spreaker itself, where they promote an episode online, you know, but on their platform. But I still got a bit of credit on there actually. I think I've still got about twenty pound, which I could use for that. But I don't know if it really really did anything I mean if it did if it was there would be I suppose if there was a way of working it which I'm sure there is a way of benefit from it then it would be worth the investment but I just don't have the investment I, mean, I do think you know if I was fairly well off you know so if I won the lottery and I had, I don't know, just, you know, let's, let's say a million, just for cliche's sake. I would just continue to do this. Isn't that weird? Isn't that, isn't it weird that I'd actually... I've had a few ideas about what I'd quite like to do. If I won the lottery, I thought I'd go and live in a health spa for a year. So go and spend, you know, maybe a, a grand a week or something in a health spa and do that for a whole year. 
and get healthy, eat healthy, do exercise. But I could also make recordings, you know, as well. Because as long as I've got internet, I can do stuff like that. And then at the end of the year, that will give me time to think about what I want to do with the money. So I won't have just spent it all or spent loads of it because... I mean, it's a thing though, isn't it? If you had a million, to some people, a million pound isn't a lot of money. To me, it is. And I don't mean um, to people, you know, some countries where you s- there's 500,000, whatever, to buy a loaf of bread. I don't mean where the currency's gone, to d- dropped out to nothing. But I mean, like, in a... In here, in this country, in this this kind of society, where a million, it's just like I had this conversation with uh, someone, and he said to me, two hundred and fifty grand wouldn't be enough." And he said, five hundred grand wouldn't be enough to retire. It wouldn't be enough for him to leave his job." So fair enough, maybe not to retire if you want to, especially if you he's 40. It's like, okay. But I kind of think if you can't make 500 grand last, yet you manage to get by on earning 30,000 a year, Yet 500,000 isn't a lot of money to you if you're earning 30,000 a year. That seems a bit of all, it's like, okay, so how would you like 10 years worth of wages right now? I know you wouldn't, would you? Because it's not a lot of money, is it? It's only 300 grand. You wouldn't want that. It's not enough, is it? No, no, it's okay. I I will take it. I do find it funny. People that say, oh yeah, 250 grand, that's not enough. You know, that wouldn't even... I just pay off the mortgage and that would be it. Is that wouldn't not enough? Yeah, if they walked past a £20 note on the floor, they would stop and pick it up. In fact, if they saw it in in the road, they'd probably try and get it out of the road. People don't have come up with some silly stuff to me, including me, <laughs> obviously. 250 grand, that's not enough for me. 250 grand, I have 10 pound 20 pence in the bank. 250,000 pounds would be. That would last me for the rest of my life. Or at least the next 10, 15 years, if I didn't have any other income and I just lived lived on 20 grand a year, doing this, had holidays and, you know, lived a, an okay life. With the interest, 250 grand, that would keep me going forever. Well, at least until I retire. Because what am I, 49 now? 49, I can retire when I'm... I think I can retire when I'm 68. So I've only got 19 years left to retire. That's all. That's not long. So i just got to find a way to get through the next 19 years so that I can continue living this lifestyle no 90 thing is I if I I know that if I keep doing what I'm doing keep doing this keep 
making recordings for the next 19 years. I'll have, I don't know how many, what, 10,000 recordings plus, probably 20,000 recordings maybe, which is a lot, isn't it? It's quite a lot. Based on the amount that I do now, uh, I haven't... I haven't counted lately. I don't mean haven't counted anything. I mean, I did count the minutes that my uh, porridge went into the microwave. But that was via a dial on the actual microwave, so I didn't actually really have to count. But I did watch as the numbers were going up from like 10 seconds, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, me, 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 me. So... But I haven't recently counted the amount of recordings that I've made this year. Because the last two years, so 2018 and 2019, which is the current year that I'm as I'm talking now, this is the year that we're still in, although there's only a month left, just over a month until 2020 arrives. I think, I think, I think, I think, I've made more recordings this year than at any other year since I started this in 2006. So I think this has been my most productive year as far as making recordings. But not making videos. I've made very few videos at all. Last year, I would say it was the most productive year up to that point has been overtaken this year I've made I've done more this year I think than I did last year but I would need to count them and in all fairness it's only been the last two years that I've been adding dates to the recordings I never used to do that before I thought, no, actually, that's not true. When I very, very first started making audio recordings, so I had a podcast, and I used to also used to put them onto MySpace. Shows you how old, how far we're going back. That's before Facebook even existed. And MySpace... Um, sure I used to put the dates and I actually found believe it or not I found, I found, I found a podcast um, some, uh, on, on MySpace and some stuff that's still there that I was able to download from you know a long, long, many, many years back and they did have dates you know sort of the 14th of July two, or 2007 so, you know it's that kind of stuff it's like wow I, I kind of wish I'd still I'd kept that up all the way through so that I could just get more of an idea of the dates of when I did stuff and I don't know just just my own kind of interest really because you know if there's nothing if I you know I'm very interested as I'm sure you all agree very interesting indeed mm. tell me more you know what it's one thing that no one's ever said to me no one's ever said to me Jason tell me more <laughs> please keep talking say more about that never ever 
even in counselling. I've even been in counselling sessions as a client and the counsellors hasn't said, tell me more. Quite often they sort of say, can you please stop talking now? Uh, remember one, one counsellor said, uh, I suppose you don't mind if we uh, finish the session early. I said, I've only been here 10 minutes. She said, yeah, I know, but I've got a headache now. <laughs> so, okay. You know what I did? Oh, uh, no, I won't tell you. I did this as a joke with one of my last clients. But I'd, I'd say I'm letting you know that it was a joke and she knew it was a joke. Um, but it was the last session and it was my very last like closing and I was stopping being a counsellor. And as the time went past, I just I looked at the clock, I just put my coat on and I just went to the door and walked out. And just I just did it to make a laugh and it did make a laugh. But it was just, I thought it was really funny to do that because it's so wrong it's kind of the and I've got to stress that it was funny and it made her laugh it wasn't a serious um, we knew that the, re, that the sessions were coming to an end quite long before they did uh, but I kind of thought about it years for years how funny it would be to do that like but not funny but wrong I think it's probably the probably the best wait a sec I have the TV on um, on mute but there's they show stuff on there on channel 5 in England they show stuff that they just it's really um Just, <laughs> just not not um, hugely pleasant to watch visually. So I'm kind of getting rid of it. Yeah, so I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of it. Me 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 me. Ah. So, I'm sure there was something I was talking about. I, 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 ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. I haven't written a poem for ages. You know what? I wrote a poem for my nan when she, for her funeral, and it was going to be put into her coffin before she got buried. And, you know, it was a nice thing, so it's not really a morbid story. It's just something that I thought would be nice. Now, you know, I was asked by my family, and so did you want to, we're, we're putting like little cards in the coffin and other stuff, you know, some flowers. And I said, oh, perhaps I'll write a poem. Write a poem. Okay, yeah, that's nice. And I wrote it and I gave it to, you know, a family member to put it in there. I had no idea that they were going to read it. They read my poem. Not my nan, I'm talking about the you know, family members that read my poem and it was private. And it peed me off a little bit, if I'm honest. I'm just glad I didn't put the original copy in. <laughs> It'd be like, I'd be glad to get rid of these these people, this family, they've got a proper annoying at me. Something like that. Uh, Hong Kong local elections. Oh, I upset. Well, I didn't mean to, but I think uh, I think I upset the lady in the garage today. 
she's from I don't know somewhere in Europe and uh, she's lovely she's she's the friendliest person in the garage and I said to her are oh, you looking forward she looked a bit miserable today and I said to her, are you looking forward to the elections? Or, no, I said to her, are you looking forward to when the elections are over? I was referring to our elections, because obviously the election is on the 12th of uh, December. And she said, yeah, I'm looking forward to it be over tomorrow. And I thought, oh no, I'm not going to miss three weeks of my life again, am I? So I like, looked at my phone, checked the date, and I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean tomorrow? It's not the 11th today. It's only, it's not even December yet. She said, what? I said, yeah. She said, no, tomorrow. That's when the elections are. I said, no, they're not. It's the 12th. She said, no, the elections in my country are tomorrow. I said, elections in your country? She said, yeah. I said, well, do you have a government there, do you? She said, what? I said, do you have politicians and stuff? She said, are you joking? I said, yeah. I think she got a bit annoyed. I didn't mean to. Just, I was just messing around. But I had no idea. I don't... Because here... In the United um, England of Kingdom, Great Britain, on the news, because I do watch the news, so I kind of can tell you this, we don't, especially the daytime news, we focus kind of on ourself and maybe America. You know, we do cover some things, like political things, um, maybe in a Ukraine or if there's a new Prime Minister in Australia or New Zealand or Canada or France or Italy or Spain and, you know, might or Ireland you know, there might be like a mention of it but not usually if it does cover an election it's, there was something about an election on the news today where the the government couldn't well basically the winners couldn't put together an actual government so I think then it goes doesn't it go back to another election or something I don't know but um, they couldn't form a government they basically couldn't I think that's when there's no majority which means that and a couple of parties or even three parties have to try and work together to all you know to form a parliament but if they all want different things and they you know it the news without any sound you can kind of get an idea from the facial expressions if it's genuine or like a little fakey smile and the reporter on here or the, the newsreader on this one because it's the middle of the night well it's not middle of the night it's 1.14am is it's got quite a friendly face and seems genuine genuine yes genuine oh look 
See, in the middle of the night, they do cover more stuff, but it's also quite repetitive. They just re-show the same stuff like every hour, unless there's a an actual news story that's happening in the moment. Yeah. So yeah, so I've got my, so I'm not going to university in January. And I don't really know. It's I'm not sure what to do with that with that new information. Um, left me a little bit. Ooh, a little bit. Ooh, you know. It's like, oh. Yeah. So I'm just letting it sink in. It's now Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. And there's Saturday night, there's boxing on all night. And I mean literally all night. From probably seven o'clock in the evening, there's world title fights in England and that will probably finish about 11 maybe a little bit later and then at 2 o'clock in the morning American boxing's on a world title fight between uh, Ortiz and uh, Wilder the heavyweight champion of the world WBC Deontay Wilder so I've got my Saturday night sorted have a lovely evening in watching the boxing and um, I have a lovely <laughs> I have a lovely evening in every single night but yeah I suppose but I'm doing but we, we, when I'm watching oh, when I'm watching the boxing when I'm watching a box, when I'm watching a boxing, I enjoy it. It's my favourite sport, and that's it. So um, it has been for boxing has been my favourite sport since I was probably fourteen. So how many years is that? Twenty four, thirty four. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. So 35 years. Boxing has been my favourite sport. I suppose it's not only my favourite sport, it's the only sport that I love. I did like, you know, I did love martial arts and stuff, but didn't particularly enjoy watching it. Because I I did I entered a couple of competitions when I was doing karate, and it is interesting to watch if there's someone there that you um you know one of your friends and you get to watch him or her um in the tournament. So there's that excitement. Uh, one of your teammates, you know, one of your club, people from your club. But on telly, I just didn't, because it's very much uh, point based. And I don't think, again, it's kind of one of those things that. didn't have the I didn't have that ability I didn't have the kicking ability that the the top athletes have the top martial artists have even when I was young I could kick 
above my head. But I was only three foot tall, you know. I was kicking people in the hips, and that was, it can do, you know, something, but I just, it never felt right. I had to, just, I didn't, I don't think I even ever really enjoyed kicking. Just, yeah, you know. I think I like punching, didn't like kicking. When I say punch, I'm talking about like punch bags and stuff like that. Not people. Because I think uh, with boxing, in the ring. should be in, It's a sport. should be in the ring. And it's the best place. So I like boxing because it's... I think it's something that I could have been good at if I'd have been young. If I'd have got into it at a very early age. I think I could have been proficient my granddad was a boxer in the army and he was a tough tough man very tough but he was uh, but then my dad he was judo he was a judo expert my dad was when he was at school and but he had the idea he was my size when he was at school now, he was just born big. He was he left school. He was like fourteen and a half stone or something. Um, I'm a bit heavier than that, but he, you know, he was big. Then and he kind of he was he was I suppose he was like one of those kids that's already a man or already a woman, long before they even are halfway through high school. They're just physically as tall as they're ever going to get as broad and heavy as they're ever going to get as hairy as they're ever going to get um, and then there's the boys there's, <laughs> there's the boy and I remember being at school with adults people, kids that were as big as my dad like you know it's like why are you at school shouldn't you be on a building site somewhere or, you know, shouldn't you have your own company? Shouldn't you have kids? Mind you, actually when I was at school, the biggest one at school, the one that was, he'd been an adult, right, from high, from junior school, he was, from the age of 10, I think he was basically a man. And he was big, he's like tall, wide, bigger than what I am now, and a lot taller as well. And he did have a baby in the in the last year of school. Well, he, we, yeah, we didn't ever realise he was a girl. Boom, 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 boom. That would be he got um, he had a baby. So it's quite weird. Imagine that was in. So that baby was probably born in nineteen eighty six, eighty seven. Let's say end of eighty six. So, 86, 96, 2006, 2016, 78, you know, that child will be 32 or 33 years old. Can you believe it? Oh, I love cheering myself up. Just the time, it's like, it doesn't even seem possible that I could be a grandparent well I'm not but I could you know I mean statistically age wise I mean I, I'm from a timeline perspective of uh, from fertility to my age now I could have had a child at the age of 16 17 18, you know, so say I've had a child at 18, and then she had a child, or he had a child at 18, so 18 plus 18, which is 36, isn't it, which means I could have a three-year-old grandchild.
I think the only person, I, I nearly did have a kid once, but the, the, apart from that, the only real possibility that I have of having a child, like, you know, would be from... 19, I think, I might be wrong, but 1995, I think, and that's, there was a, there was a couple that I thought possible, but there's one, but I've not seen her since, so I have no idea, so 95, 2005, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the, again, 23 years old. I could have a 23 year old son or daughter, or both. Could have been twins. I've got twins uh, in my family. And ginger. The gin, 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 like the ginger gene. The ginger gene I've got. My. My nan's brother was Ginger. Not when I knew him. When I knew him, he was grey and bald, you know, bald and grey, but he was in his 80s, 87 or something. But he, he used to be Ginger. And two of my Is it three? No, at least two of my cousins' kids are ginger. Like different cousins, like not, but even one's a second cousin and one's a third or fourth, third cousin. And they've got ginger. So ginger, ginger gene is there. So I could have a, if I had a kid, my kid could be Ed Sheeran. Oh my goodness. Ed Sheeran could be my child. He could be my son. How cool would that be? Hi, Ed. <laughs> um, I would have got in contact had I known. Um... I've only got ten pound in my bank, otherwise I'd I'd buy you a, a present costing twelve pound. Uh you fancy meeting up? I can come round to your mansion if you send a send a private limousine. Wow. That'll explain why he's so creative. He takes after his daddy. Yeah. I was when I was younger. Genuinely, I wanted to be a singer or a singer songwriter, and I did. I did do those things, but not professionally. Um. And <laughs> I. I just that's what I really wanted to do, but. I couldn't, I just didn't have, I didn't have this self-belief, perhaps the motivation, I don't know, whatever, but learning to play an instrument that you can sing along to would involve me learning the guitar, really, or the piano, and I've owned probably about 10 guitars over the years with the hope that I can learn to play something that I can that can accompany me singing and it's never really worked out I remember once I had a, and I actually had a really nice guitar I think I was working in security and I spent about £220 on this guitar and this was in 1996 so it's quite a lot of money 
but it was a really beautiful sounding guitar and I'd already owned probably about five or six before then as well perhaps more Must the first I got a guitar <laughs> I bought this guitar from the catalogue when I was about 14 and I basically there was a time well, I'll tell you what a catalogue is if you don't know it's basically this really thick book I mean really hundreds and hundreds of pages glossy and you could wipe them clean um, anyway I won't but there's there's uh, you could basically look at the pictures of everything that you was buying and it'd be thousands and thousands and thousands of items from all you know from every single thing um, this is basically what you do now online if you go to Amazon or various different ones uh, and this the catalogues have now moved online as well so like very.co.uk UK Little Woods obviously there's Argos which is um, there so and whatever one that's available in your particular country anyway I bought this guitar and I had these dreams of learning to play it and I, I've, I've even as a child I had a sense of um, what's the right word something that no one else seems to really have especially people who share houses oh consideration that's it I was considerate and I didn't want to disturb any other people because I had my fun with the with the violin and the bugle and the drums I, I felt like I'd used up that credit that credit of um disturbing the other people in the house when I was a child and it was a little bit more tense because we were all teenagers at that point and they, I was 14 one was 16 and one was 18 so I couldn't kind of get away with uh, annoying them so much as, like I used to be able to so I, I got an electric guitar which had headphones and uh, a speaker, you know, like a speaker that I could put headphones in so I didn't disturb anyone. The guitar came through. It used to be really quick, still, it, which is good. You didn't have to wait more than a few days. Came through and I'm all excited, open it up. And I'm looking at it. And it don't look right. It feels nice. It's nice and heavy. And I kind of, oh. Like, you know, and it had a strap and everything. Had a strap on. So I could um, not, yeah, you know, I could put my hands, this, the strap on allowed me to have my hands free. And, so that was good I could look in the mirror and just stand there almost start think of myself as uh, Jimi Hendrix but uh, slightly different looking and I could see that there was something not quite right about the guitar I couldn't figure it out what it was and it's bugging me now I thought should I just google it and find out what's going on and then I remembered that google didn't exist and the internet didn't exist at that time so I thought I better not and I couldn't wait for 20 years for the internet to come about so I thought okay it's not really 20 years, was it? 
2004. That's less than 20 years, so what? 15 years? 14, 2014, no, 1984, 94. about 13 years I mean really the internet in the late 90s was uh, it was a bit mm, a bit ba- very basic wasn't it very slow you know I remember just Yeah, sometimes I'd, I'd click on a picture to download and I'd go to work and come back eight hours later and they still hadn't finished uploading onto the pic, onto the screen, you know, it was just very, very slow. Sometimes it's worth the wait, but that dial-up modem Boing, 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 boing. Boing, boing, boing. I used to quite like that sound. But anyway, the... It turned out... I asked my brother. I said, brother. He said, yes, brother. I said, uh... What's that smell? He said, don't worry about that. What do you want? I said, uh, do you... I got a guitar. But it's, it's just a bit weird. I don't know what's wrong with it. He said, oh, I'll have a look. So he came into my bedroom. And he... Uh, he started laughing. I thought, oh no, he's seen me, he's seen me underwear. And it wasn't that. I said, it wasn't. I said, well, what are you laughing at? He said, I can't believe it. You know what you just done? I said, well, I know quite a lot of what I've just done. I'm fairly aware of my actions, generally. What were you um, focusing on at this particular time? He said, well, your guitar, that's what you call me in here I didn't really call you in did I I just knocked on your door and he said can you have a look at my guitar he said yeah well, in, that, in that case that's what I'm doing he said you know what you've done I said well other than go around in circles and he said oh you've got such a dry sense of humour ah ah I said, oh, what? He said, you know, you've only gone and bought yourself a bass guitar. I said, yeah. He said, have you not noticed there's only four strings on there? should be six strings. I said, I thought maybe they'd uh, forgotten to put the other two on. He said, no, it's a bass guitar. I said, yeah, so... So how are you supposed to write songs and accompany yourself with a bass guitar? You need a normal guitar to do that. You know, a lead guitar, just a basic standard six string guitar. I said, no, I, I, I wanted it to be a bass guitar. He said, you wanted it to be a bass, yeah? I said, yeah. Why is that? Because I heard that uh, men or women or other people, whoever, that play bass guitars are idolised and, and thought of as highly creative and um, groovy people. Oh, 
okay where did you hear that I can't remember where I heard it but I definitely heard it because otherwise why would I spend £90 on a bass guitar unless I wanted the bass guitar to be delivered to me to play the bass he said I don't think you did I said well I don't think you 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 did either he said, well, he said what so I, don't, I don't I don't this is a silly conversation he said yeah it is isn't it I said yeah I know he said you were you doing one of those recordings again I said yeah he said you really should let me know when you're making recordings you shouldn't just record me you know without uh, telling me that that's what you're doing I said I know I forgot he said you seem to forget quite a lot lately haven't you I said like what he said you know And I said, yes, yeah, leave it at that, shall we? He said, yeah. He said, she said, they all said. Then an elephant came all the way up to the hill. Ooh, it's lovely up here, said the elephant. The monkey was at the bottom of the hill saying, can you see the castle from there? And the elephant said, no, I can't. And the monkey said, oh, that's a shame. And that's the end of that story. So what else has happened? I think that's about it, really. Not much going on, just... You know, just... Uh, doing my thing which brings us to the end of this recording so thank you very much for listening please remember kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love